Proverbs chapter 6. My son. Again, my son. Right into Rehoboam. But God speaking to us. If thou be surety for thy friend. Surety is a loan. It's a thing for a loss of payment. In other words, if somebody gets a loan and you co-sign, you become a surety. You have to make the payment that he didn't make. It is very unwise to go into being a co-signer of a loan. I wouldn't even think about it if you asked me. I don't care who the person is. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if that person is going to lose their job, if they're going to make the payments. And as a, as a surety, as a co-signer, I don't know. If you, make the, if you end up making the payments, do you get the product? Or does the buyer get it still? If thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hands with a stranger, and, you know, shaking hands. Today, you know, high five. Don't even ever, ever even think about with a stranger. Somebody you don't know comes up to you and, oh, you know, can I, can I get you a loan? Or get, no. no. Now, 6-1, 11-15, 17-18, 2016, and 27-17 as we go on to the, to the book of Proverbs. Thou art snared. That's a trap. Your leg is tied with the words of thy mouth. And Matthew 12 says, You'll be judged for every word, idle word that you speak. You don't have to sign a piece of paper. You just got to speak your mouth. You know, it's weird that David, when he was went into the enemy camp after Saul said, you know, I forgive you, and David feared. And he went out and he killed a bunch of Philistines, I think it was. And he come back to the king, and king said, well, where'd you go today? Oh, I went to the land of, of Judah, and I killed a bunch of people there to show his honor to the enemy king. Well, he didn't kill Jews. He killed other people. I'm not getting the story completely. But you know God would charge him for being a Jew killer? Because he said it. Now, we talked about that last night and the night before about actors and actresses. If you say you're a policeman or a, a, a firefighter or a lawyer or whatever it is, those are lies. People don't understand God will hold you account to what you say, even if it's wrong, even if it's a lie. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Ecclesiastes 5, 5. And this is a backup alone. There's no signature. It's just mouth. Do this now, my son. If you did it, deliver thyself when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go and humble thyself and make sure thy friend. You better make sure he's your friend. You better go talk to him. If you've done it. And you better talk some sense into that guy. Now there are terrible M&M's of the Bible. You say, what are terrible M&M's? Money in mouth. Some money's first, then the mouth, and some mouth, then money. And we see that here. Give not sleep unto the, to, give not sleep to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Chapter three, verse twenty-eight. Don't put off to tomorrow. You better deal with it right now. Psalm is awfully quick when it comes to business matters, money matters. Do it now. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of honor. 
know, picture the, the road coming up to the hunter. Say, hi, here I am. Take me. That doesn't happen. But you better. And as a bird from the hand of a fowler, as somebody who gets birds, catches them, sets a trap for them. Bird walks up to him, lands on his finger, saying, hey, take me down. Because it will give you discredit of character. Because you are now obligated. And I don't think you would have in your budget to pay for this guy's loan. See, if that guy, if the seller, if the buyer, excuse me, if the buyer's name is Mud, they don't care. They go to the second name, yours. My advice is not to do it at all. All right, now. Talk about money. Now we move to go to the end, thou sluggard. Chapter 30, verse 25. And consider her ways and be wise. Now the worker ants are females. How does Solomon know that, I wonder? I mean, did he see little boy ants wear pants and little, and little girl ants wear dresses? No, he got his wisdom from God. I wonder how long it took scientists to know the sexes of the ants. That's why it says her way. I wonder what the perverted Bible said. I wonder if they got it right. And be wise. So Solomon says, Another reference would be Job 12, 7. Go watch the end. So what has the world come up with for this? And maybe a Christian did it. I don't know. Look into it. Probably come up with an ant farm. And you watch those ants work. And they are workers. You don't see an ant, an ant farm with a water cooler standing there with, with, with a drink in his hand and having a cup of coffee. The only ant that you see that's not working in an ant colony is a dead ant. Which having no guide. There's no leader. There's no supervisor. There's no boss. Then there are some people out there that will only work when the boss is around. Once the boss is gone, we had something today that we're still looking at, it, but there's a possibility we learned today that we had work done to our car, and in most cases, this part is left out by the people that do it. Like, what, because the boss wasn't around, they just do have half job I wonder if the boss was there that part would have been put in you're not what Solomon is telling you listen you're not just to work because the boss is there you're not to do it just because mom and dad sees you doing it do it now you may have a job where you don't have to go up to the boss and say, what do I have to do today? If you already know what your job is, do it. My job is I have to go see my boss and see what aisles they want me to do. Usually they'll have me do the same two aisles, but sometimes they'll switch for whatever reason. So I will ask every night. But if I am told that if, I, if my job was aisle 8 and 9 every single night, then as soon as I come in and punch in aisle 8 and 9, don't go spend 15 minutes to try and find a boss to find out, okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's not, I mean, I need to find out. But you may have a job where you already know what you're supposed to do. Get going. Get started doing right on the time you're supposed to start doing. Those ants don't have a boss. They don't get no control. They do what they're programmed to do. Work. We're programmed to work. Work showed up before the fall. Man was designed to be husbandman. So work is not a result of the sin. 
which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, there's no demand from another ant. How about that? Yeah, but you ever see a couple ants come up and help another ant carry something that's bigger than what they are that they need help? And the, the ants don't go, oh, hey, over here, get over here. They all work together. They know what to be done. I believe it's Proverbs. I believe there are places where there, I know in the Bible it says go watch some certain animals. We'll see what they do and learn. Animals are a remarkable thing. And it's a wonder that God did, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, oh, for God so loved the animals, he gave his only begotten son. Because they're the ones that will listen to God and do what they're supposed to. Only man the rest. You know why evolution's wrong? Because man does completely opposite of what the animals do. The animals listen to God. Uh, where am I? Provide, uh, okay, real. Provide her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. She's always working. Winter's coming. She won't be able to go out in the cold. And there's a whole colony of ants that need to be taken care of. Florida, I think we're the ant capital of the world. How long wilt thou sleep? Old sluggard. Now the, the sluggard, the reference here is to the ant. The ant don't sleep. And this is not, you know, you don't go to bed at, at, at night and wake up in the morning. That's your body's built for that. It's talking about when it's time to work, why are you sleeping? That's the reference. There are herds and herds of, of, of people in America that when, when it's working hours, they're in bed. They don't work a day of their life. And yet, America is opposed to the Bible by giving them food and giving them money so when the, when the winter comes, they can eat. And yet, they don't gather their food in the summer and they don't gather the food in the harvest. Do you know all those people that approve those checks every month are going to give an account to God on why they did a non-Bible way? Why did you give a slugger money when he didn't deserve it? You know, if you took away that cause, you would find a lot of people wouldn't be coming to America. You would find the tax money not needed as much because most of them will die of hunger. Most of them don't want to work. Now, there are some who work and need the help. Give it to them. They're not making enough thanks to big bucks in, in our, our, our government system. They're underpaid and overtaxed. There are people that need help. But then again, there are just lazy people who they need to be cut. How long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Ephesians 5, 11 through 17. You had a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, the snooze along. And I'm guilty there. There's 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes, you could at least write a chapter in the Bible. Fifteen more minutes, you, you, you could at least give it a, a, a great kiss to your spouse. A lot can be done in fifteen minutes. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. You know what America's going to end up by what they're doing against the Bible? She's going to end up as a poverty nation. The money has already failed. We are a trillion dollars in debt. Do you realize if you were to collect a dollar from every American, the 50 states, from that that is born to that is ready for the deathbed, you were you will still not have enough money to pay the debt. 
One down. They went to every door and every homeless camp and everywhere. And the, the nursery at the hospital where the babies are born and the funeral home just about to die and collected a dollar from everybody, you'd still be in debt. America's in debt. She's spending more money than she's got. In, in politics, that's deficit spending. In real middle life, that's called bouncing checks. It's illegal for us, but not for the government. America will come to poverty. Travaileth and as an armed man, guy, an armed man wants something. He wants money. That's why he walks into a store somewhere with a gun. I want money. A naughty person. A new thing. He talked about. Surety, we talked about working and laziness and a naughty person. Now you check that with, with Jeremiah 24 verses 2 and 3. The naughty fig. It's rotten. You know what Jeremiah says? It's evil. Now have you ever heard somebody say about their, their little child, oh, he's just naughty? According to Jeremiah 24, you're calling that child evil. You know when you used to I don't I haven't heard it in years but when I was growing up used to hear guys call their wife battle axes. You know in the Bible that's mentioned and that is Satan, the tool of God. You call your wife Satan and you call your children evil. And we already talked about the mouth. A naughty person, a wicked man. Walk it with a forward mouth. Now there's the mouth again. You can destroy yourself saying I'm going to pay a debt. And now you can you can destroy yourself by having a forward mouth. Which means you're not yielded to God. You're, not, you're going to be in rebellion. Forward is 21 times in the Bible. 1 Peter 2.18 is the only New Testament for that word. When you're dealing with somebody, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. No, I'm not going to do it. They're forward. Now, see, you fought forward with cussing. and No, that's when you tell God, I'm not going to do it this way. You go up to a Christian and say, hey, the Bible says you... you you need to rejoice everyone. Oh, I ain't going to do that. Oh, I got a miserable life. You're forward. You're not going to yield to what the word says. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Well, I don't think I can do that. I'm not really, I'm not, you're forward. You're not going to You're not going to try. He winketh with his eyes. You know what the wink is. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. <laughs> he speaketh with his feet. I'm out of here. He teaches with his fingers and he talks, you know. I, I do that all the time. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises. Mischief continually. He soweth discord. Psalm 36, 14 and 37, 7. He winkers with his eye because what he's saying, he's not being honest. He'll wink to a friend like, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? This guy's buying on. Come on, come with me, come with me. And his feet are not sound. You know, interest is a waste of your money, going back to surety. You are paying somebody to use their money. Why not just wait? Video games will not let you spend more money than you have, but credit cards will.
katanya Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Now versus a naughty person, a wicked man, walking with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly he shall, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. That's the Antichrist, Daniel 11, 45, Revelation 19, 19, and 20, verse 9. So all right now we're, we're moving into the Antichrist, the tribulation period. And we're going to stop there when we pick up a good uh, lesson in verse 16. And we learn about surety, working, you know, working for your money. Your money, not someone else's. And then that forwardness, the Antichrist. Sleep is good, but don't sleep too much.